So what does it cost to fly a TBM 900 series? So this is the 900, the 910, the 930, the 940. Is there a 50? I think so, 60s, a lot of 900s. They're all the same airplane fundamentally in fuselage and engine. They differ in electronics and avionics. So what's the cost? Well, this is the latest iteration and version of Daher TBM. And so if you were gonna buy this on the used market, you know, a 900, 3.1 for 3.2 million is pretty much what you're gonna be with uh, a fair amount of time left on the engine. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. That's your biggest cost in the 900. I don't think that's the best value, by the way. I would recommend getting a TBM 700A or B. These can be had for anywhere from half a million to 800,000 to a million. In fact, for the price of a shiny new Cirrus, SR22T, you actually could get into a perfectly good TBM that will go about 300 knots. So that's, that's really it. So there's a big variation on that. So for the price of a new Cirrus SR22, I think they're like 1.1, 1.2 million when you fully deck them out now, and that's a piston, mind you. I got a friend with a, it's basically a piston, but very modern avionics and stuff. He paid $2 million for that piston, right? That's where we're talking for like new aircraft these days. I don't know if that's good, that's bad, that's whatever. But you can get a TBM 700 A or B model um, for under a million. So you can actually be almost twice as fast, maybe twice as fast, um, and twice as capable as that piston. You'll have older avionics, but you can get there. And you know, there comes a point where you just, you actually do have the mission for it. So let's talk about cost of ownership. In the turbine world, you have to be aware of the engine people and the engine programs, right? So the FAA says that at 3,500 hours, your engine, your jet, needs to be taken apart and looked at and rebuilt. You know, it's like the TBOs we have for the pistons, right? Problem is, unlike the piston, if you're complaining about, you know, 40 or $50,000 for a rebuild or whatever, try half a million. An engine like this, which is a Pratt & Whitney PT6 66 Delta. If you just show up at Pratt and Whitney and hello, I'm at 3,500 hours. I'd like to rebuild my engine, please. So I'm, I'm airworthy again. Um, they'll be like, great. Um, well, let's take a look. Oh my, you know, we don't like these, the coating loss here. And we don't like this, that, and the other 600,000. Uh, I've seen it as far as 800,000. A new one is 1.1 million now, I think. So it's like, yikes, right? Okay, so what do you do when you have an engine that at 3,500 hours, particularly if you're buying a used aircraft, is you know going to need a rebuild? The important thing to realize is for part 91, the rebuild is optional. It's not mandatory. It's actually, it's not mandatory for anybody. Suggest it. There's a program, and this is probably a show on its own called MORE or M-O-R-E. It's a program developed by the FAA and some charter operators in the 90s, which lets you add additional inspection regimen, which will cost you a little more, but you can avoid the overhaul for a much longer period of time, which you absolutely want to do. Cost is, is sophisticated. All right, so why did I go into all of that about turbines and engines and stuff like that? So let's say you're a general aviation person, you're moving from a piston. Goodbye, Saratoga. Goodbye, Cirrus or whatever. I'm going to be a, a jet guy now. I'm going to be a prop jet guy. You got to be very judicious about the cost. You got to figure out what you want your cost to be. So what I mean by that is if you're going to be, you're like, you know what? At 3,500 hours, I only have a thousand hours left. For me, that's only five years of flying. And then I absolutely want to refurb the engine and I don't want to be surprised by the amount of money. You're going to pay per hour into a program right? You're going to say, well, I'm going to say $200 an hour. I'm going to put in a bank account and then I'm going to do a deal with Pratt & Whitney or whatever, uh, where by they'll guarantee to overhaul my engine at some fixed cost. I don't like that. I, I typically would prefer to just treat an engine very, very well and extend it as far as I can, but I'm unique like that. So here are my costs for operating the airplane. Okay. My cost for operating this airplane, it's 56 gallons an hour. Unlike most jets, it deals at gallons per hour as opposed to pounds. So 56 gallons an hour times like the way fuel prices have been lately, it's not atypical for me on a very, very long journey. You know, when I stop and I put in 200 gallons or whatever to see a 15 to $1,800 fuel bill, right? So that's pretty typical. So your, your cost may vary, but that's the number one cost in this, 56 gallons per hour. You can't escape it. That said, it's twice as fast as a Cirrus or something else. So if you're thinking, well, I can do 15 or 11 gallons an hour, I'm like, great, but it takes you twice as, as long to get someplace. So there's that. Still, it's more expensive. I think it works out to, 
I, I've heard it's like five miles to the gallon. I think that's what it does uh, effectively, fully loaded and stuff. So it's pretty good. Other costs are um, your insurance. So insurance is a substantial cost in this. You know, your cost of acquisition of the aircraft, of course, it's a turbine, there's that. The engine programs, you know, that's up to you. Uh, I don't do an engine program. I'm taking my chances. Uh, I also plan on flying it and being buried in it. Buried in it from a non-flying, peaceful passing in my bed many years from now, mind you, just be clear on that. Insurance can be like my insurance. Uh, you know, I have, I have jet time, charter time, stuff like that. I'm still paying over 30,000, like 35,000. And then there's a lot of things uh, with that insurance. So 35,000, and then if you wanna go to Europe, Oh, that is another uh, ten thousand dollars, please, or ten thousand euros for for coming to Europe. Yeah, sorry, it's terrible. But that's uh, you know, so insurance can really vary. Um, you know, probably I can't see you getting in something like this as a GA person for less than twenty thousand a year in insurance. That said, I seem to remember my Cirrus being fifteen or twelve. So, is what it is. So your insurance costs. Uh, fortunately, the insurance costs don't scale with the amount you fly it. So if you're a big flyer in general aviation, yeah, okay, it's $30,000 a year, which is a lot, but if you're flying 300 hours a year, it's really not that bad when you amortize it over all your flying. So there's that. Other costs associated with it, this is up to you. You can basically, your maintenance on this is uh, more rigid than it is for a piston. For this particular aircraft, the manufacturer has a, has a series of inspections they recommend. So my partner, Brett, who you've met in other videos, is a, an IA and an A&P and does specifically use the De Hare Service Center. So I learned through him, the manufacturer has these recommendations. I'm not an A&P, but um, every year your annual is either what's called an A plus, a B plus, or a C plus, and these things rotate. I forget the actual schedule. 